Neener, neener, boo, boo. We, we like you. So like and follow and subscribe to us. And have all your friends do the same. This is why I hated poetry and English. <laughs> they have all those rules about rhyming and meter and pentameter and alternator and Fred the Wonder Duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, subscribe, follow us. Have friends like, subscribe, follow us. Donkey and Chains. It's German. Almost. <laughs> this is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. From Patrick Reed, our man in Liverpool. Cops and paramedics responded to calls of a man lying unconscious on the mezzanine floor of a subway station in Queens, New York recently. Police say Christopher De La Cruz, 28, died at the scene. How? How? Well, police say he was attempting to evade the fair. What? Fairs are fun. They're about 275 for a ride, by the way. On yeah. this Close circuit television shows him trying to jump over the turnstile as he entered the station. <laughs> He's seen falling and appears to drop his phone before stumbling back and making repeated attempts to hop over another turnstile. Has he thought maybe this isn't his best plan? I'm thinking there was some alcohol involved in this decision-making tree. Well, something. Finally, yep. he is seen losing his balance and flipping over the barrier. There you go. Do you get over? Yes, he flipped over it. All right. And broke Sweet. his neck. I have good news and I have bad news. Mm. Mission accomplished would be the good news. <laughs> cost of the subway ride, two seventy five. dollars yep. Cost for trying to avoid the monetary cost? Your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not a really good guy with numbers, but that seems... The odds are bad. Bring three bucks and get a little change back. Go away. Some items just sort of catapult themselves into the lead story, like on a Delta Airlines flight in November from Syracuse, New York, to Atlanta of Georgia. So the from woman there to there. Okay. Well, you're actually going from up here. Right, where? Oh, yeah, probably here. up here to down here. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Right here. Okay. Give or take. Yeah, yeah. A woman sitting in 13A allegedly tried to breastfeed her hairless cat. Oh, my God. Much to the cat's distress. Not to, you know, mention I'm sure the other passengers were pleased as punch. Well, I don't know. I'd be taking pictures and sending them everywhere. I, see, that's the difference. You'd be taking pictures. I'd be like, <laughs> I would be a slack jawed yokel. Local? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not saying my jaw wouldn't drop, but I would then start thinking we got to have pictures. And they have teeth, don't they, hairless cat? Oh, I thought you I, meant the breasts um no the, the cats have the teeth so you saw that movie too right <laughs> flight attendants repeatedly asked the woman to please return the yelling cat to its kennel and those things back to where they belong <laughs> and the new york post reported that she refused her shirt was up damn it and she was trying to get that cat to latch on and the cat was screaming for its life, said Ainsley Elizabeth, a flight attendant who was, <laughs> who was on board during the incident and was probably was she, wishing she could be anywhere else. Was she still laughing when she was giving the quote? Oh, I'm thinking tears had to be rolling by that point. <laughs> <laughs> now, finally, a message was sent through the aircraft communications addressing and reporting system, commonly called the ACARS. Okay. Because it's so freaking long, you got to go with the letters. It alerted the ground crew in Atlanta that they would need a red coat team to apprehend the woman at the gate. You're saying a red coat team? Yeah, I'm thinking of guys with tall hats and, and no, muzzle loading rifles. Especially trained to handle customer service issues, which now included apparently breastfeeding a cat. cat. Yeah. yeah. It's unclear what happened to the woman or her cat after the flight landed. I have several guesses, all of which include an asylum. <laughs> Probably for both. I mean, that cat was traumatized beyond belief. So he was looking for a dog. Please <laughs> just give it, eat me. Just kill me. do it. Passengers who filmed themselves partying without masks aboard a chartered flight from Montreal to Mexico were stranded after three airlines refused to fly them home to Canada. 
Sunwing Airlines canceled the return charter flight from Cancun. Hey, we've been there. We have. Air Transat and Air Canada both said they refused to carry the passengers as well. Adding insult to injury, they were branded idiots by Prime Minister Justin wow. Trudeau. My God. That's like the kettle calling the coals back to Newcastle. That's like an idiot being upset with an idiot. Canadian agencies are investigating and said passengers who broke transportation regulations could be fined. Meantime, There's about more? 30 of these dingbats have tested positive for COVID, so they're there for the duration. <sighs> and one is whining about, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. Don't care. I'm on their side. If I could speak with a Canadian accent, I'd say, screw Trudeau, eh? <laughs> I don't have a horse in that race, though, so I... Yeah, really. It was just kids being stupid. Yeah. But kids are supposed to be rebellious. <sighs> Let's pick something better. Okay. <laughs> the f Oh, you mean them? Yeah. yeah. No, I like, I like that one. It fits the times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as it's not as memorable as putting the little flower in the gun barrel of the uh, National Guardsman right um, before several of your friends were killed. Yep. Was it after? Yeah, it was right before. Yep, the Flower Mound Rebels. Hey, there's a theme. How did we do that? Flower Mound Rebels. They're a youth football team in Texas. Okay. What the hell would their mascot be? What's a daisy? A mound of flower. No, no, it's flower, like as in the things you, oh, look, roses, daisies, wow. not, you know, not General Mills, milled stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm utterly, I, I had a completely different view. of. I'm guessing stuff. Flower Mound is a city in Texas, because if you're a city or a town or a large family, you have a football team. In, in Texas, Texas, yes, you yeah. do. Even the Grandma flower, plays tackle. The f She's pretty good. She's made all state a couple of years. And she's like in her 70s now. <laughs> exactly. The Flower Mound Rebels, this youth football team, won't be in the playoffs this year, according to NBC News. Wow, they got NBC News. Something. The weird Rebels, happened. composed of seven and eight year olds, are, quote, you've probably seen this, too good for their league. They have boasted a perfect record and have outscored their opponents 199 to six, according to the Keller Youth Association VP, Rhett Taylor. Wow. They are a select level team, he said. Are they actually the using high school kids? If the, no, they're seven, eight year olds. Okay. He said if the team had competed in the league Super Bowl, he would have caught it from parents of other teams. The center for the Flower Mound Rebels, Grayson Tanner, said he was very sad about the ruling. It's kind of like what the uh, is the MAC in Minnesota, what they did to St. Thomas. You're too good at football, so you can't play with us anymore. Yeah, yeah, well, and yet in St. John's heyday, when they rolled over everyone yeah. on a continual basis, nobody did anything. Nope. Well, they also had Coach Gallardi, who was probably one of the smartest men ever to play. See, Coach, I'm, I'm thinking it was. It's distinctly a popularity contest. St. John's is okay. St. Thomas is, well, you know, that city school, and <laughs> so they're just picking on them. Well, yeah, Bethel's a city school, but they're bad, so it doesn't matter. How do we get there from Flower Mound? <laughs> well, you travel north. Oh, there you yeah. And, yeah. This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network. <laughs>